Welcome back. I'm excited to be here with Lee Benson, who has a fascinating story to share with us. I am excited to be here with Lee Benson, who is here on the line with us. Lee, can you hear me? I sure can, Heidi. I'm so happy that you can join us here today. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I am a classically trained engineer um, and had been an engineer for about 25 years. I've also spent eight years being a data scientist, so very much in the empirical space. You have been through a transformative journey in the last few years, from being the scientist and the engineer that you are to activating something very special within yourself and activating your healing abilities and your intuitive abilities. I would love to hear what, what got you started? What got us started actually to find you, um, because I think there are no, you know, coincidences anymore in this world. I have two children and uh, one of them, our son, had had quite the health journey early in his life, so in his high school years. And, you know, being a parent that goes through that with them, that itself, you know, kind of breaks you open. It brings you up to a place that, you know, you might not otherwise get to. And so you have all this, you know, pain, this, um, what do I do with this? You know, why did this happen to me? Which is when I started you know, searching because, you know, there are physical ailments, but these more emotional, spiritual ailments. I'm sorry, I'm going to get emotional, which is really not. But that's important because I'm speaking from the heart. Um, so that's, you know, that was probably the crucible, I would call it. You know, we kind of went through fire, which opened my mind to possibilities that, you know, rather than going the Western route. And I was lucky enough to meet you. <laughs> And so, and it was at a perfect time because we started early enough that I worked with you with the breath work and it's so profoundly different and opening and calming and it would end up transferring kind of this pain and suffering that had been within me into gratitude um, that, you know, we had had this experience um, and I, <laughs> that's insane to say, um, but there is only appreciation now because of the changes that came about in myself and our family as a result of this. It was incredibly powerful to do it in a family unit. Yeah, let's My get husband. a little background on what <laughs> even brought you to this family deep dive. If you scroll back in time... <laughs> what was going on within your family? Uh, incredible change. Um, well, let's see if I can roll back time because that's, yes, I mean, the physical was the portal and I certainly was manifesting it in unbelievable ways that would result in hospitalizations and, and uh, the like. And of course, Western medicine was mystified. I hate being a medical thank you mystery. thank for taking responsibility. <laughs> Yes, I just had to point that out because you just said it so beautifully how you create it so and so and so and so Absolutely. to own it. It just goes to show of your inner work and uh, and where you are today that you can truly take responsibility and own everything in your life that has happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we are a reflection of the choices and the thoughts that we are transmitting and experiencing beginning with the breath work, everybody had been affected in our family, in our nucleus family, with our son's health journey. And so I had hoped that if I could introduce them to this process, that I would empower them to get to the place that I was feeling like I was at. You know, like as a mom, you want to nurture, you want to help, um, you want to help people process what you've discovered, you know, hey, let's take this path together. 
Um, just to get a time frame, Lee, when are we talking about? Because what you're sharing is not the ordinary language or words yes. that you would hear from an engineer <laughs> and a scientist. No, no exactly. Um, so this was early in 2020, I believe. My husband is also very logical. He has a career in legal space. He has done a lot of work in other modalities to try to get to that because he's not a typical attorney any longer and as a result of this. So here yeah. you are, a scientist, yes. engineer, and an attorney. Yes, exactly. Diving into your spiritual realm and exactly. um, healing yourself from inside out. So Absolutely. the process that you are talking about, this is not an ordinary healing process. No. I just want to give a little bit of background. So um, the process that you're referring to that we have uh, worked with together, it's mm -hmm. a five-step process process that allows you to activate your expanded consciousness. It raises vibration. It helps you to remember who you are. It helps you to take your power back. And the first step in this process, Absolutely. it really gives you the experience of that you're so much more than this physical body. Absolutely. And, and that and is, go ahead. Yes. I was going to say, and that's so important to recognizing that that you are and have been creating these experiences. And that's so eye-opening when you're talking about grief and pain and physical ailments. There's that, oh my goodness, space that you get to, which is very empowering. I mean, there's a shocking moment for sure, because it totally changes the world paradigm that most of us live in here, in this time, in this place. So something very remarkable happens when we are activating ourselves and we're charging ourselves up. And this is part of this first step in this process that is called the lightning soul renewal process. Yeah. It's lightning, like the lightning strike, <laughs> because it can change physical ailments. It can change the mindset. It can change in emotional states and activate the connection with the soul in such a short amount of time. And that's Absolutely. where the lightning word comes from, the speed of lightning. When that expansion is happening, then it's possible to connect with these deeper layers within us, the soul, the higher self, the all-knowing wisdom within. As healing as this is on the physical level, you know, I was still a practicing data scientist engineer, and this work was transformative even in the work environment for me because it took what was what I would consider initially a high head thought. Oh, you know, these you have these lightning flashes of inspiration and you could problem solve it really does grow your intuition and and your creativity because I started listening, listening to something that was larger than myself, I became unbelievably productive because of allowing this. I actually have three patents now because I just asked for assistance in solving something that people had not been able to solve before. And that assistance is there. And I, that, how do you ever say that? Like I've read a lot of books about scientists in the past who dream their ideas this is very conscious this is something that you know change is a game changer <laughs> just at, even if the all you think about is what what's in it for me it could change the way that you are creative and productive and helpful in the world right now even though I think it's that's like the minorest thing that it brought to me but it was a big one so yeah. yeah, it sounds like it was really a game changer in not only Activating. In your workspace, <laughs> but in your whole life. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually, as a result of this work, I'll be completely honest, I am no longer a data scientist. That is far too reductive of a space to live in. The other thing I'd like to say is, so our son had gone through it after he was mostly physically healed. And 
it has done nothing but define his journey thus far. What was he uh, yeah. suffering from? Well, <laughs> let's see. I would say physically what he was suffering from. He had a concussion in football that had damaged the way that the brain works, but more importantly, had opened up the blood brain barrier. And he had, we live in the mountains. He had been in Boy Scouts for years and years and years. And he had picked up a series of parasites that would cross his blood brain barrier. And his brain was under attack. Because of his age, because of where he was at in his life cycle here right now. And how old was when, he at that point? Uh, he's 15 at that time. Um, when all that started, we would spend the next three and a half years in the mental health space because that's the way Western medicine construes that. Um, there was no question about was this uh, an affection? It was the onset of mental illness. And of course, those strategies had no bearing and had no effect on helping this kid who was very, very much suffering. Um, was he on medication? Uh, incredible amounts. Route? He was not the same person. Um, antipsychotics, sedatives. I mean, he was medically managed to the hilt. And, you know, it's it's amazing that he's still here with us because that's a lot to do to a young person. And that was very hard for us because we could not figure out after seeking guidance everywhere. And we ended up discovering, because I wouldn't take no for an answer, that this couldn't be the this couldn't be his outcome. And he eventually would go through chemotherapy to remove the parasites from his brain. But I think that even though that physical aspect of what he was manifesting was addressed, what had been inside of him hadn't been. <laughs> it sounds very odd, but I, again, I'm going back to why, you know, and so that leaves its mark, right? That whole journey, that experience with excessive chemicals, uh, more than what we live in. Which was part of the reason, because I had started working with you, and it was beyond just unraveling the physical journey. It was the, you know, recognizing what is at the core, what's possible to find joy, um, to recognize that this is what we live in. And which is why I had so much hope that he would agree to participate in, you know, what was an extended lightning soul renewal process we gathered up in this sacred circle on your land and then as a family you expanded your consciousness and joined into this very special activity and activation that happens when you raise your vibration and then at a, at a collective you were able to open up to gaining information about yourself, but also for a family on what it was you were ready to free yourself from and clear in order to join together stronger as that family unit. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's a, you know, we're here for a reason, having a connection, recognizing those connections. That entire experience was absolutely nothing but transformative for our son, who currently now is a very different being who is pursuing this kind of awareness in higher institutions. So he's actually studying mysticism and the connection to something higher than ourselves, both within current cultures and also other cultures. Because what he experienced was like a door opening for him. And and it brought him joy, and it would change the trajectory of his life. So, truly remarkable. Thank it's you truly remarkable. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's really hard to put into words the change and the opportunity, right? He found his gateway. And that is, to me, the definition of healing. Like, if you don't know why you're here and what you're trying to experience, at some level, you're wandering around in the dark lost. Of course, you know, 
not all who wander are lost, but he certainly had that moment of, wow, and he's been nothing but a rocket since. So that in itself is exceedingly healing. Your son's transformation came about fairly quickly. He yes. went through one process and uh, yes. the process was for your whole family. It was about three, four hours. Yes. So Lee, thank you for sharing about this remarkable transformation in your son. I would love to hear a little bit about how that has changed your relationship with your son. We are very, very close. I think, you know, you, you're, he's my youngest and he certainly, it had been dramatically hard to go through his health journey with him. But watching him and being a part, because I, you know, too had done, you know, the opening and would work there's a common understanding and a different way that we talk these days because we understand kind of where we've been writ large, right? I mean, larger than this particular life experience, this long dance that has happened through time. It softens the heart <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, we spend a lot of time together. I mean, he doesn't live here anymore, but yes, but when we can. Yes. You've also had uh, some very special changes happening in your daughter. Yes. So they open up her eyes to a darkness that existed and she was carrying within her. She would end up losing about 45 pounds in the next six months as a result of, I think, releasing some of that darkness, even though it, it wasn't, you know, there's a joyfulness um, that our son had experienced in that, you know, intensive, it was very hard for her. I wouldn't say that I wouldn't sugarcoat it because it is like lightning. And sometimes lightning is warming and sometimes lightning can crack you open. And, and it did that. She knows herself way more than I can imagine that she ever would have if she hadn't done that. So it started your whole family on this new journey together to yes. go through this process, the lightning soul yes. renewal process. And then you adopted this as a daily practice. I did. What was it that drove you or what was your drive to get up every morning and to dive into expanding your consciousness and activating yourself so you would be able to call in information and messages from your spirit guides and your all-knowing self and to truly let go of everything that you were ready to free yourself from? I was going to say just felt like the right thing at the right time. I think that, you know, eventually the more you do this, fear leaves you. You know, I think we we spend a lot, or I did anyway, I lived a life of fear. What would people think? Was I doing the right thing? Was I the constant questioning that is always in your mind? And, you know, fear of the unknown, I suppose, is always a part of that. But it that all goes away. In fact, this is a very powerful thing i mean it's it becomes part of how can you not be in that more activated state you'll feel it if you don't practice it you definitely will feel it you know a few minutes to an hour a day gives you that joy and that high that you see yeah that just it feels good and it takes away fear it does take away fear isn't it amazing how good we are able to feel in this physical form? Absolutely. Which is... Love... Yes, go ahead. I was going to say, which is, you know, again, about 100% different than when I came to you, because I was definitely in a physical suffering space, being in and out of hospitals. So, yes. I'd love to hear a little bit about your activation of your healing abilities. So for all of my life, often ignored and suppressed by myself, I can often, um, if I'm paying attention, recognize when someone is about to suffer something dramatic health-wise. Um, I did not know what that was 
you know, as a child when you're growing up and nobody talks like that. So I spent a lifetime suppressing that um, fear, fear of the unknown. And was that just a figment of my imagination? Despite years of, you know, many, 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 many cases of confirmation that I would see and within three weeks, something would happen. As a result of doing the lightning soul, I let go of that fear. Um, I still cannot name because I don't have the right training, but I now know what this is. It's very transformative. I mean, I no longer kind of live the life that I had been living. I have great gratitude and appreciation. It gives you a place of peace. Um, I also know when I'm beginning to get out of balance more so, so I wouldn't have to let it go on so long so that you can pull it back into a better space. So yeah, it stays with you. And I think that, gosh, I would wish that everybody would, would adopt this practice. Yeah. There's something so special when you open your heart Mm -hmm. and deepening that love for yourself. And our work together has evolved a lot around that heart opening space and honoring oneself and deepening that love and the ability to forgive, (laughs) to forgive yourself and to forgive everybody else. Could you share a little bit about how this self-love opening the heart forgiveness has been important to you? The whole process, you know, I mean, you forgive yourself at first, but when you really start practicing it, you know, we are creatures that come from, you know, families and communities and friends and experiences. And and you don't realize how much you might be holding history and grudges and all of this in in you in a way that's kind of lowering your vibration, creating a darkness. And this practice helps you unravel that. It's literally like taking a, you know, how necklaces sometimes get tied up in a box and you have no idea. It's like unraveling that necklace and everything just, you let go. And it makes for better relationships with yourself and with everybody else. Yeah, I would have to say that particularly with my family, my extended family, that has been transformative. Not that you forget, you just forgive. (laughs) I would love to hear a little bit, a few words about your heart, how you experience coming from the heart and speaking from your heart. Well, I mean, that's very different because, you know, I spent a lifetime suppressing, whether that be, you know, fear, worry or whatever was causing the suppression. And now being able to feel the emotion and let it run through you, you know, whether it brings tears of joy, um, tears of sadness, right? You can process all this now that I felt like I hadn't had the experience with until I started doing this. I didn't feel like that was a part of who I was. Mm-hmm. And and I think that that makes me much more open. People are aware of it like I I can tell how people interact with me now so there's something to be said about synchronicities (laughs) yes yes and I know that uh, you have been in touch with the unknown for Mm -hmm. most of your life but to come to the place to acknowledge that there is more between heaven and earth or more in this life that we live than what you can see and being trained as a scientist and a an engineer having that mindset going through most of your life to come back into honoring that intuitive aspect and that guided place within yourself and experience synchronicities can you say a few words about that before i would overthink everything. So synchronicities in the sense of letting things flow and being open to how experiences and knowledge should be, can be, not should be, can be experienced is very, very different because there's not that that ego control that can exist, particularly from the scientific space. Like if I can't explain it, then it must not be. 
Uh, it's different. It's very different. And I have had synchronicities now where that I'll meet other individuals who arrive kind of at the right time, at the right place. It's this network that exists that you might not be aware of until until you open up enough. So, yes, I would say that that would be the synchronicity. And open up enough to what? In your words, what is it that you feel that you're opening up to? I think it's an awareness of this larger consciousness. I do think that capable of recognizing who we actually are. And it's it's not the meat suit that we're walking around in. It's something much, much, it's everything. It literally is everything. Not just sentient beings, but, you know, you mentioned the land that we live on. I mean, it's all part of this larger consciousness. So, you know, physics talks about this. They do. They actually do. They're just using very, very different words. And I think that if you are, you know, in quantum physics, you will eventually come full circle to what we're talking about here right now. Just we're using different words to describe this same experience that we can become aware of what is, of what you are. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing about that, Lee. I love hearing about how your heart opening and you're experiencing the synchronicities of life and how you are speaking about the interconnectedness of everything. Say a little bit more about that shift you go through from experiencing yourself as just this little human being feeling somewhat insignificant to feeling this oneness with everything. It does change the way that you interact with people and kind of understand this larger process that's in play in the world. I think we have a tendency to get caught up in, well, I was, I was caught up in the moment of the experience that I was having right now. And it's so much more than that. It does bring a peacefulness because you absolutely begin to become an observer and with love. Like it doesn't mean that you're stepping away at all. You engage with everybody with love. And I now no longer have fear about talking about any of this with people that are ready. And you can, (laughs) synchronicity, you'll end up meeting these people in your life and events happen. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just changed the way you, you view the world. So it's changed my experience. It's changed my life. I don't, you know, changed my family. I don't. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Do you have a meditation practice, Lee? I do have a meditation process that also includes this breath work. So that, of course, is all new. You know, I would say that all of this has come about in the last five years. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. So when you are going through your activation, enlightenment, it's fair to say, in some ways, you really have enlightened yourself, would you say? I would say, yeah, I would say. I would say that it's time for the world to start talking about that all these practices, whatever way you're approaching that, is about enlightenment. It really is. That isn't an ego thing to say. But we have forgotten. We have forgotten the the meaning of the word sin is to forget. We have forgotten who we are. And we should be talking about that. It's the opportunity. It's the it's the invitation to remember. And that's why we're here today to help inspire anybody who is ready to dive a little bit deeper than what the physical body is presenting itself with, because we're so much more. And thank you again so much for coming on here today to to share with all of us about your incredible shift and transformation and experiences, not just within yourself, but your whole family and in how you're showing up in the world and how you're connecting with people. Yes. Is there anything else that you would like to share to people that are going through 
the the hardship of disease and fear and shutting themselves down and not really trusting their own intuitive abilities what would you share lee to uh, to a person that could use some inspiring words right now i guess it would be yes i mean grief and suffering and fear and that is all a part of the experience but it doesn't have to be the end of your experience and so i think that that's you know it might that's what gets you to the place of questioning isn't there something more and there is there is take a step trust yourself because i guarantee you there's appreciation love and light at the other side i can guarantee that i say as a data scientist and a scientist <laughs> i can guarantee that so yeah Yes. I can feel your wholehearted experience. Yes. Direct experience of the shift from truly living in that hiding away, fearful place, coming through, building the bridge, taking the step off the cliff and trusting that the bridge will be there. Yes. And it's that first step you're talking about. Is that right? You unfold to this. So it's not all going to be, dang, you're, you know, enlightened like a Moses or something, but it's going to become a, in the right path for you at the right time. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. Yes. One step at a time. Exactly. Yeah. Peel the, the onion. Yeah. Peeling the onion. Yes. Yeah. Peel the veils away from your eyes and your heart. It's, yeah, so. Yes. It's like climbing a mountain a little bit. <laughs> it is. And reaching yeah. the peak. Yeah. And then coming down on the mountain and integrating all your experiences and readying yourself to climb another mountain. Mm -hmm. What you've shared with us today, Lee, is like that journey of finding that joy and the support in climbing the peaks and enjoying full on what it is like to being on the top of the mountain <laughs> <laughs> and then readying yourself to climb the next mountain. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a, a, an appropriate metaphor because you did mention a really important term, which is integration taking the time for yourself when you have these experiences and then processing them and owning them, that does take time. It's not like it's a step through a gate. Um, it's a commitment. It's a commitment to love yourself. I hope that everybody who does listen to this recognizes that, you know, we came from a very dark, suppressed place. Our family, me, I was in a not a not a good space um an unusual space to be able to take that kind of leap of faith into something and you know several years later we are completely transformed everybody is healthier and happier and with a greater understanding of themselves and there is no pill there is no procedure that western medicine will give you you have this power you just got to practice it what i hear you say is the journey of truly stepping back into your power and claiming that power of who you truly are. Yes. To claim that back and stand in your power and knowing your truth. Is that what you're talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. The empowerment that comes with that in every way of life. Thank you so much for sharing, Lee. It's such a joy to connect with you and to hear your fascinating and very inspiring story about your unfolding life. Thank you so very much. I, The gratitude and appreciation I have for you as a guide and a door opener has no bounds. To end this wonderful journey that we've been on here with Lee Benson today. I want to remind you that you are loved no matter what it is that's going on in your life to help you remember that it's never too late to heal at all levels. I bow to the living power of the divine within you. Namaste.